بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. And this verse is repeated when people are getting married. You will hear, يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة. What comes after that? Can we say it? A lot of you know it. Many of you have forgotten the day you were married. Subhanallah. Forgotten. There was a verse read, O oh people, be conscious of your Rabb who created you from a single source, a single soul, and from it, its partner, and from the two of them caused a multitude of male and female to spread across the entire globe and earth. So fear he, Allah, whose name you use to swear an oath and be conscious of your family members, your relatives, those whom you are connected to through the wombs, because Allah is the one who chose those wombs. I didn't choose the womb that I was going to be in. Allah chose it. So Allah warns us. That verse is asking us to respect women. 1438, 39 years back, the hijrah happened. These verses revealed at a time when people used to abuse their women. I'd like to think that today, we are getting back to a new type of abuse. May Allah make us conscious of the fact that we have rights to fulfill. People ask, well, who is higher? Isn't a man supposed to be higher than a woman? It's a question a lot of people ask. You haven't understood. You haven't understood. We are equal in terms of closeness to the Almighty as human beings. We are equal in terms of spirituality. Allah has physically created us different. So we honor that difference of the physical nature by taking into consideration and understanding the values that Allah has asked us to instill within us regarding the opposite sex both ways. So a man has a role to play. A woman has a role to play. Certain things are overlapping. Certain things one cannot do, the other one can, and vice versa, such as bearing a child and so on. So many things. I don't even need to mention them. You would know, but we cannot say she's lower. How can you say she's lower? In what way? To Allah, she might be higher. How many of us have heard of Ummahatul Mu'mineen, Aisha radiallahu anha? I ask you, who is higher, you or her? She's a woman, subhanallah, way beyond. So it's your relationship with the Almighty that makes you higher than the other. Don't ever think that one is lower than the other in terms of their access to the Almighty and their closeness, the closeness they could achieve. Perhaps they may be even closer than you and I. May Allah make it easy for us. But indeed, men are supposed to look after their family members. They're supposed to look after their women. They're supposed to take care of a lot of what is required within the family. It's something Allah placed on your shoulders. May Allah make it easy for us. That was a loud Amin. Mashallah. May Allah make, really make it easy for us then. Mashallah. Mashallah. So my brothers and sisters, the Surah An-Nisa commences in this way. It continues where Allah says, don't cheat your women. Don't cheat your women. In what way? So Allah tells you, you know, when someone passes away, there's wealth. The wealth needs to be distributed in a specific way. Don't cheat them. Don't undervalue the buildings and don't hide the estate. They might be vulnerable at times because of orphans, because of them being orphaned or whatever other reason. They may not be directly involved in that business, but you need to know, fulfill that right. Don't cheat them. I'd rather give them something that they're happy with, that they know is correct than to cheat them and face the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah says those who have cheated in inheritance and they have shortchanged their women, Allah says, يُدْخِلْهُ نَارًا خَالِدًا فِيهَا وَلَهُ عَذَابٌ مُهِينٌ it's very severe. Allah says that person will be entering hellfire for a long, long time. You know, Khalid and Fiha actually means forever. But the Mufassirin say that it, it, it's either because you have turned away from Allah completely by oppressing them or by cheating in inheritance, or it's, it means you will be there for a very long time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not make that happen to us. My brothers and sisters, everyone loves wealth. Everyone loves nice things. But I repeat, not at the expense of your 
link with your maker. You will never enjoy. Look at those who have won. And I actually went in to do a study. You can actually Google it. It's quite easy. Those who've won lotteries of millions, 90% of them suicidal. Go and read. I promise you, not a joke. 90% of them suicidal. Many of them did commit that suicide. Read about it. But they won 90 million, 100 million, 500 million, 20 million, 2 million, 5 million figures that if we were to hear them, we would just think they are Zimbabwean dollars. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to respect one another. And Allah says clearly in the Quran, you will fulfill each other's rights. Like I said, mention is made of the, va the values of the family unit. And Allah says, when you have a problem, don't seek divorce. No, your first step is to solve the problem and to try again and again. And if really there is nothing that will be done about it, then you can consider divorce as a blessing. And when divorce happens, Allah says, don't become ugly. Don't start your mudslinging. Imagine all these verses are in Surah An-Nisa. Allah says, ultimately at the end, when you've tried to solve your matters more than once and you haven't managed, at the end, if you were then to divorce, Allah will bless both parties with goodness for as long as they're both good. Someone asks you, you, you know what? I want to marry your ex-wife. How was she? Huh? <laughs> what? The Sahaba radiallahu anhum were asked that question. In fact, the Sahaba radiallahu anhum used to go and say, you know what? I was married to her. We were two different people, but I think she'll get along with you. Try saying that to someone here today. <laughs> I don't know. May Allah forgive us. Shayateen are tied up. <laughs> they might break the shackles and decide to return. No, that won't happen, inshallah. That won't happen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. But I'm showing you how they respected each other. They were married. Allah says, how could you talk bad about each other when you undressed in front of each other? Which means they knew everything about you. It's your duty, amana, trust to look after that. You can say, you know what? We didn't get along. Good person, we didn't get along. You really have something to say, look, I'd be a bit careful. But anyway, subhanallah, may Allah make it easy for us. May Allah make it easy. If there was something really nasty, like drugs, like something really bad, it's your duty to respectfully say, look, we had this problem, but I hope that it is resolved. And inshallah, if it's working with you, let it happen. Because you're not allowed to lie either. But we're talking about unnecessary, much slinging. People come in and throw as much as they want. And another very big disaster, Allah makes mention about this as well. When you are separating, Allah will provide for you on condition that you are good. And Allah says, if you want to solve the problem, both parties want to resolve a matter, it will be resolved. We have a disease today. Small thing happens, divorce. I want out. Make an effort. One year, two years. What? One year? Are you mad? One week is more than enough. Subhanallah, we are becoming so fragile that we don't even want to make an effort regarding our relationships. That's why the world is in chaos. Because when the family unit is chaotic, the children, they are doubting their own identity. I met a child saying, I don't know if I'm male or female. I said, how come? He says, you know, I really don't understand. We got to the bottom of it. The mother and father fighting like cats and dogs in front of the children and everything was happening. Vulgar, immoral, abusive, X-rated, all in front of the kids. The child is, it's, they're too young to know all about this. You, your duty is to protect the child. Why did you bring the child into this earth? May Allah forgive us. Why did you get married if you don't have time for your spouse? My friends, where? My friends. Football, what football? Bring the ball home, subhanAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. <laughs> You might score a few goals. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, it's a fact. Happiness in the home is something we should openly discuss because we are facing a problem, a challenge. We should not be ashamed of addressing this matter. So the winners, the champions from amongst us, the Prophet ﷺ says, خيركم 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 The best from amongst you are those who are best to their wives. And I am the best from amongst you to mine. That's what he says. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When I said this hadith to some young people who were married, you know what point they picked up? 
people pick up what they want. What did I say? The best from amongst you are those who are best to their wives. They say, I'm waiting for the S at the end. Then we'll see what happens. May Allah forgive us. You can't even manage one and you're busy thinking of the S, plural. Today when I was coming through, my friends were telling me, what are you going to talk about? I said, well, we're reading Surah to Nisa. I've been given 29 minutes and 60 seconds. In other words, 30 minutes. But Subhanallah, they said, why don't you talk about polygamy? So why don't you talk about polygamy? My brothers and sisters, sort your life out. You know, it's like talking about building a huge building, but you don't have $5 in your pocket. First, get the $5, subhanallah. First, understand there are so many things. It's a topic that really, it is there in the Sharia. We know how it is discussed in the Quran. Nothing's going to ever change from the Quranic teaching. It's not from me or from you. It's there. No one can deny what is there. But how can you decide to promote things in a way that the marriages or the houses will be destroyed and children will be lost because people don't know that we need to work on something we have to start off with. I can't open five branches when I haven't yet opened one properly. Subhanallah. I can't have my business expand when the first one is running on a loss. I hope you've understood what I've said. May Allah help us concentrate on our families. Remember the winner is not he or she who the whole world looks at and says, wow, what a lovely person. But the one whom your spouse looks at and appreciates. And in order to get that appreciation, you are going to have to work very, very hard. You are going to have to work very, very hard. My brothers and sisters, may Allah bless you all. I really hope and pray that the dose we have had today, really, it will help us to become better people, more conscious of how we treat our women. And inshallah, more conscious the women become of how to treat the men too. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us Jannatul Firdaus.